their coworker. They project all this anger. They go in their car, have consciousness hit them. Oh, I probably was a little rough on her. Ah, no, she was a bitch. She deserved it. Ego just came in. So when we have that awareness coming through saying, you know, maybe I was a little harsh and I could go and say, I'm sorry. And then we have to no justify it. I'm right. She's wrong. Ego. So if we can really catch that and we can have awareness, we can have a healthier experience in every part of our life. And when we can do that and honor ourselves, we love ourselves instead of if I can't acknowledge my behavior hurt another, then I have to make them the enemy. And then I, when I'm conscious, moments of consciousness come in, I feel bad and then I self-loathe and then I get heavier and I start to hate myself. And this is not the direction we want to go. And as we're evolving, we're being guided to be the love. We're being guided to realize that we are light. And when we become lighter, when we talk about the word enlightened, enlightenment means I'm lighter. Like I'm lighter in my energy. I am more of light. I am love in action. But if I'm not awake and aware and I'm unconscious in my behavior, I'm very heavy, angry, vengeful. There's no enlightenment there. It's heaviness. It's dense. It's painful. It creates a lot of suffering. So I'm going to take a pause here and see if anybody has any feedback or questions. And if you guys want to call in, I can do a live reading today for whoever wants to call. So any feedback? There is something from Ron. And Ron says, what Tanya says about forgiveness and entering situation with love is how we handle our tense relational moments. We grow closer in each instance and we have fewer and fewer tense moments the more we handle them in a space of love and kindness instead of judgment and ego. Makes a lot of sense. Yes. And that is like Ron, in case any of you don't get it yet, he's my husband. <laughs> and so, yeah, and Ron is, he's right in that because we, we both came from relationships that were, there was not really healthy communication. And when we found each other, I had done a lot of work on myself. He'd done work on himself and we came together and we made that a very important part of our relationship that whatever happens, we're going to deal with it now. And we're not going to just hold that anger in and be quiet and play mind games and, think they should figure it out. They should know why I'm mad. You know, we're not going to do any of that because in order to have a healthy relationship, we need to have clear communication. And mm -hmm. if both of our agenda is love, we're going to do fine. If our agenda is about being right or wrong, we're going to have struggle. And so that's true. What he's saying is we really, when we show up and something could happen, like there may be a situation that, I don't understand his intention and how he says something. So I'll ask, what was your intention? Like when, when you said that, like it didn't feel very loving. And then he might have to have a minute to process that like, Oh, well what? And there might be that moment of a defensive. I don't know about this. Like, I think I'm fine. But as we process that and we'll come and look in each other's eyes and then he'll be like, baby, I am so sorry if you felt like there was anything. Cause my alignment is totally about loving you and we'll kind of talk through it. And there might be times that something got triggered from my pain of my past or times where something got triggered from his pain of his past. But when we show up together, we can work through that. Oh, and yes. we, we don't go to bed angry. That is a really good, good rule. I mean, I don't even think of it as a rule. I think it's a great intention. If you can show up with your beloved and intend to have clarity of communication and be there for each other, even if you maybe aren't understanding what's going on with somebody, like they may have an emotional day. There's, there was like a time where I was having, and I kind of talked about it in here, right? A lot of uh, just some women in the community just being straight up messed up to me. And I was like, what's happening? And I did take it personal at that time. That's why what I'm talking about today, I have had to learn how to process this and not take things as personally. But there was a day I did and I was laying on the bed and I was just crying and Ron just came and laid by me, just held me, laid there, didn't say anything, and just was with me. 
And every now and then he would just be like, are you okay, baby? I'm so sorry you're hurting. But he was just holding space with me. And honestly, I feel like there's times like, you know, and there's times I've done that for him. If he's hurting, I just hold him and say, oh, you're amazing, baby. I love you so much. And if we can show up for each other like that, it's beautiful. And we have a beautiful relationship. But before we could have that, I had to know on my own how to have that for myself. And he had to lear learn on his own as well how to have that for himself. And I, he says I helped him with that. But we've worked in that process. And so whatever you guys that are watching are going through, if you're struggling in your relationships with someone else, um, I promise you it will benefit you to put the time into self. And the reason I lead so many workshops and things are is not just because that's like, I need to make some money. What can I, you know, come up with a workshop? It's from the heart. And these workshops I see are changing humans' lives for the ones who show up. But the ones who make excuses, the ones who want to compete and compare, the ones who don't want to really go deeply into what they need to heal, they won't stay and last long with me. And that's okay. I honor that. I honor that maybe they're just not ready for the intensity because as I'm very gentle... I also am just like a light, it's like laser beam right there. And we focus on healing that. And so the clients I summon in, we work great together. But each of you may have, maybe you don't even live where I live and you work with people in your area. You want to put time into that self-love. So if there's events that you really feel help you connect with your soul and help you to remember your soul and help you to heal the pain of your past, Put energy and time into that. Like dedicate your life to healing and loving yourself and then doing other stuff. Uh, everything will change on this planet when we each choose this. But most of us make everything else more important. When I see the collective and the suffering, it's because our priorities are out of alignment. We're making our priorities about making money or our priorities are about our status or our priorities are about being right. And we put a lot of time and energy into working harder, harder, doing stuff, being busier at the cost of our own self-love. And all that's waiting for each of you is yourself to come home to yourself. Like your innermost self is just waiting to be acknowledged and waiting to be loved and waiting to be fully accepted. And when you can do that for yourself, you're going to be able to share that with others. And until you can do that with yourself, you will not have the highest relationships with others. Simple as that. You will have codependent relationships. You will have, you know, passive aggressive relationships. You'll have a lot of drama. But if you stop with the drama and the distractions and you focus on self-love and you do the work that you need to do, which isn't exactly work. I think people are get scared of that right away, like work. But it is constant awareness. That's all it really comes down to is I make a pact and I set an intention to remain continuously and constantly awake and aware in my own life. I'm going to show up and be conscious. I'm going to show up and love myself no matter what happens. People may hate me. They may say hateful things. I'm going to know that no matter what they say, I'm awesome and I love myself. Okay, now they're saying this to really test me. It's okay. I'm still awesome. I still love myself. Maybe that moment I start to believe in their lies and I start thinking maybe I suck. Okay, wait, I just thought I sucked. It's okay. I love you. I'm awesome. I love you even though you thought you sucked for a minute. It's okay. And so we're constantly coming back to that place where we respond with love and we don't ever need to participate in that heavy game. And if we get back to the laws of attraction, which Everything in the universe is operating by whether you want to believe it or not. It's vibrational frequency. It's a vibrational universe. So if I'm focused on the problem in my relationship, I invite more problem. If I'm focused on the love in my relationship, how much I love stuff, how much I adore this and I respect that. Like today, I swear, I told Ron, he's like my genie. Like this morning, I just woke up and it's like, I didn't even say anything. And he's just like, baby, do you want this? Hey, love, I just did that for you. And would you like this? And I was just like, what is happening? It's like my personal <laughs> genie. Like you're just answering all my callings and I'm not even talking. This is awesome. And I just hugged him. and was like, I love you so much, baby. 
because that is what's going to invite more of that is me celebrating that love and saying how much I love him. And on Facebook, when I'm always like, I adore my beloved, and some people probably get sick of it, but vibrationally, I'm putting out gratitude and appreciation. And yeah. that is because I am freaking smart. And I know that when I focus on that vibrational alignment, I am welcoming more of it. So if I'm uh, like, I've worked with clients, I've taught workshops on abundance and financial prosperity. It's the same exact recipe. If I'm focusing on being broke and I talk about it, oh, I'm so broke. My friends are like, hey, Todd, you want to go to a movie? Oh, I can't. I'm broke, man. I'm so broke. I wish I had money, but I don't. And, uh, and then I'll get resentful of all the people that have money. So vibrationally, I'm going to stay in that heavy place of being broke. Or I could respond different. Hmm, I've got 10 bucks to my name. Hey, let's go see a $3 movie and then we could get a burrito. I am so rich. Let's do this. And I can focus on the abundance that I do have. Or maybe it's just not the best time to go to the movie. And I'm like, you know, I got 10 bucks and it's growing every day. And I can be grateful that I have $10 because I might be driving down the street and see someone homeless and they look like they're really hungry. And man, that puts it into perspective. I am in a car. I have 10 bucks. I'm freaking rich. And so if we start vibrationally focusing on how rich we are, how blessed we are, how abundant we are, everywhere we look, I might see people like some girl tells me she just had this breakthrough situation and she got this awesome job and she's going to make all this money. And if I'm in a low vibration of jealousy, comparing, competing, I'll be like, oh yeah, well, that's awesome girl. And I'll be like, uh, whatever. She probably did whatever, you know, and I'll start getting into my little story of drama of why she probably manipulated that. And I'll start to be competitive and compete with her. I've experienced this with humans when I'm really happy and high vibration, I can sense it in humans. Like they're kind of pissed about, and they're kind of jealous. And oh, who do you think you are? Why are you so freaking excited? Why are you telling us? Like, why are you trying to convince us? And I've had people say it, but what I see is that they don't get it, that I am celebrating my life. And in doing that, I'm actually raising the vibrational frequency and it's bringing more beauty into my life. So That's I'm going to keep doing it no matter yeah. what people think. If people think I'm crazy or they just think, oh, Tanya talking about how awesome her life is again. <laughs> fine. That's fine. But I will tell you, if you watch me and you see how awesome my life is and you don't compare to me and you don't compete with me, you could learn a lot just by watching. And you could learn a lot by shifting your focal point to being a participant in your own movie of celebration, of oh, expressing yeah. your love, expressing your gratitude. And... Talking about how rich you are, you do that long enough and you look at, wow, she got that awesome job. She's so abundant. Abundance is everywhere. Like everywhere I turn, people are just having magic happen. This is awesome. Magic is everywhere. It's like surrounding me. I am drawing magic to me like a magnet. That's how I live. And I don't compete with them. I'm like, that is awesome, girl. I am so proud of you. I have clients who have had huge breakthroughs from working with me and then they go on to be very successful at different things. And I'm not going to sit around and be jealous and like, oh, she's really successful. And yeah, I don't know. Like maybe no one really thinks I'm successful. No, who cares? Like I'm going to celebrate their success and be grateful for them and grateful for how I help participate in helping them with that success. And that's going to keep me drawing in more success. That is the self-love alignment. So I'm going to pause again. Does anybody have any questions or Anything they want to share on that? Nope. But let's let's ask everybody that's listening to call into 919-852-2121 or Computers 2K Voice. And I know you're out there and you should yeah. log into chat. Yeah. Log into <laughs> the live chat and ask us a question or maybe give us a situation that you're like, you know, Tanya, your self-love thing sounds really great and all. But what about if someone beats me up? Or what about if I went through this? Like, just ask me. Let's bring it in. Um, last night, I asked the girls in our workshop that. And I said, tell me something that you think is unforgivable. And I just wanted them to tell me something so I could respond and show them that no matter what they're going to tell me, we could respond in love. And so one of the things that came up was, like, what if you've been raped? And the other one was, like, what if you've been abused and assaulted and, like, physically harmed? And I will tell you that both of those situations, I've been through both of those things in my life. 
And you absolutely can respond with love. And the first test with abuse or rape 